Okay, welcome to the select board meeting for Monday, January 4th, 2021. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Pursuant to the governor's order of March 12th, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and his March 15th order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the select board will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the AG's webpage. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted. The town will persevere to use conference call capabilities regularly for other parties to listen in and participate accordingly. If not possible, we will post on the town's website an audio recording as soon as possible after the meeting. Okay, whose turn is it to do the Pledge of Allegiance? Ross Fox. Yes. <laughs> I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America. and oh, to the republic for which it stands, one, one, one nation, nation, under God, uh, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. <laughs> okay, public comments. Anyone? We do not have a huge cross section of the public here this evening. Okay, acknowledging payables warrant 2117B dated 1228 2020 in the amount of, holy cow, $899,827.89. And I need an omnibus motion for the Minutes and executive session minutes of December the 28th. Joe Didi will make that omnibus motion. Bus Fox will second. Doug Moglin, aye. Joe Didi, aye. Bus Fox, aye. Great. Okay. Uh, I need a motion to ratify and approve the contract with Police Chief Selectee Robert D. Landis. Joe Didi will make that motion. Russ Fox will second. Doug Moglin, aye. Joe Didi, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Okay. <clears throat> so that was a big goal of ours to get that done. And that piece is done. Goals and objectives. Yep. Goals and objectives. Cross that one off. <laughs> We'll be updating that goals and objective sheet soon to add oh. stuff to it. Christ. It's almost like we haven't looked at it since last year. All right. Remove, <laughs> review FFCRA expiration as of 1231. Right. As you know, Mr. Chair, we've been um, notified by uh, council that the um, that uh, Family First Corona Act virus uh, Legislation that was put in place uh, expired on 12-31-2020. So um, we asked Kim, who's at our meeting uh, this evening, to put some policy options, which she did. And I've provided them to you so that we can uh, see what we can do locally as we begin to see uh, and wait to see what may be done federally. And I, I know this may end up having to be, um, I don't know if this is a thing that's legislated, Kim, or if this is something that goes through a federal agency like the Department of Labor that does rulemaking. Um, well, right now, I, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand the question, but I know right now there is no more FFCRA leave. It's completely right. eliminated. So um, if you adopted this policy, it would, it would be a local decision. Right. Yeah. So we have, so we have those policy choices for the board. There's really, they're pretty much the same except for like one sentence if you read them. And that's why I, I did make sure that I gave them to you in advance. So that if you're so inclined to uh, 
make sure that you adopt one of them. Uh, you would also have to waive the second reading of a policy because usually you do two readings. So can you give us the cliff note difference between option one and two? Yes, the use of vacation time when someone is quarantining due to travel. Um, let me, I think I have them both pulled yeah. up here, but- Voluntary travel. Yep, voluntary travel. So one, I think option one um, does not allow for, so both policies allow for the use of sick leave um, when quarantining due to exposure. One allows for the use of voluntary, uh, the use of their vacation time when they have to quarantine due to voluntary travel. The other does not. So if someone does voluntary travel and they have to quarantine, it would be unpaid leave. Right, and generally when I get these types of leave requests, I usually go over them as a matter of course with um, either uh, Kim or uh, Fred or Russ Dupre. So um, we usually do look at the individual needs of the situation and I go with, over any one of them with counsel. So if I decide to go to Florida and I work for the town and I come back, option one option is I get paid to, quar to quarantine. The other option is I don't. Option uh, one is yeah. you would not be able to use any of your time for the oh, quarantine. Gotcha. Period. Gotcha. Option two is you could use vacation time. Right. But Either it's, option must be sick time. Right. It's your it's your time, Joe, as opposed time to you approved. Yes. Right, right. And as as opposed to the way it's been in the past, which is COVID time is a different charge code. Right. The way that federal legislation required that of us. Right. The federal legislation required that the town pay it. Right. 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 And that's gone right. away. Right. Yeah. Without using the individual's leave. And of course, you know, only up to a certain period of time, even that was capped. So it was not an issue, it was never abused or anything. No. So now, now what we're waiting for is to see what the federal government might do over the next, um, you know, 30 days if they feel so inclined to bring some version of this back. But in lieu of that, we need to make sure we have something in place to address our issues locally. Understood. And something that can be added, um, I, I've done a couple of these since um, I provided them, something that can be added if you would like, is where it says um, the town will allow eligible employees to utilize use of their sick time when quarantining due to potential COVID-19 exposure. Um, well, we have such as being a close contact, you know, so we could even add such as being a close contact per CDC definition or per public health definition of what a close contact is. Um, but, but the policy is to allow employees to use their sick leave when they have to quarantine so that, as we discussed um, previously, so that employees aren't thinking twice and coming into work when they should be quarantining. Right. You don't want them under pressure to report to duty and potentially have something that could infect someone else because you're looking at another, you know, two to six months waiting for... Um, the immunization process to happen. But so really, all you're really determining is which which option you want to adopt. Well, they either use their vacation time, which they use the week on vacation. They came back. They use their second week up, and if we don't go that way, then they don't use their vacation time when they're home with no money. But they knew that when they went on vacation anyways, what the option B was going to be. Right. So I don't, I don't you know, I, that's a great question. And, and yeah, someone maybe run in because they need the money that bad and they don't want to. But I, yeah, Douglas, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I, th I think early on in the pandemic, it was kind of, and I think we actually had a couple of these occasions where people were considered essential workers and were exempt from the quarantine, which absolutely made no sense because, you know, the coronavirus isn't going to discriminate. Oh, you're, oh, you're an essential worker. I'll leave you alone. Go into work. Right. So I think you could have had a much more serious situation in that case. But I, so I think from that angle, I don't personally, I wouldn't be taking a vacation right now out of state. Right. And then coming back. Um, but I, I, so, but I don't, I, 
whether they want to use their sick time or vacation time to make up those days that they're out of the office, if they want to burn it for that, I guess that's their, that would be okay. But I don't see that it's almost punitive. Like, right. If you want to look at it as punitive to say, okay, we're telling you, you shouldn't really be going on vacation out of state right now until this thing's over. But if someone does have to do that or does do that, and it, notice it says that it's voluntary. This isn't my mother's sick, a funeral, you know, something like that. My, you know, that's different. But um, I, I don't have an, an issue with that. That could actually that. fall under this. It Remember could. Paragraph, is, right, Kim, these, those issues could fall under this paragraph, Doug. Which is why we have, if they must travel to a location requiring quarantine due to an extenuating circumstance, they can apply for the use of their sick leave. So that's that additional language was meant to cover the concern about someone who may have right. to go to a funeral or, or something. Understood. That's my point. So I, in that case, you could be able to use your sick leave or vacation time for that. because But the quarantine is not optional. It's mandated under the governor's order. So, right. you know, obviously someone who's planning to go on vacation, I thought, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of a weird situation where you would use vacation and then come back because you were mandated by the state that you had to quarantine that you use COVID leave for that. It, it didn't make any sense to me. I think it should be part and parcel of the whole thing. If you have the time, you take a week's vacation and you're maybe stuck at home for 14 days after that. That's, and, but you'd have to use sick or vacation time for it. And you better have it before you leave. That's so that's uh, option two, but option two. two does not allow them to use sick time for that quarantine, only vacation, Correct. vacation so can, time. Yeah, right. And do we request Carl anything for them to come back to work? Uh, yeah, well, if I'm under a process with the Board of Health, then there's usually some sort of a uh, a, a document that I get that uh, gives us that comfort level. So I go on vacation for a week. I know I got a quarantine for a week, so I do. Do I need a negative result to go back to work or no, as long as I do my 14 days or seven well, days? Yeah, because it's one or the other. You know, you're right. quarantining quarantining almost as if you have it gotcha. and you're letting the, the time run. But the, uh, the health director is monitoring um, how quarantine periods have been modified too. Yeah. So we're fortunate that she's been staying on top of those issues. Yes, it went through my complete staff this whole vacation week. So I had no staff. So I was on the phone with her actually every day. She helped me out tremendously to stay right. staffed through this whole shit old mess. Yeah. Right. So I, I kind of like the option where it, it, the one that's got the, uh, ex, you know, the extenuating circumstance in it, but also the one that allows for people to use their vacation if they have to. That way they're just using their time. Yeah. So that's the longer, it's, it's the one that's about one sentence longer than the other one. Option one, that looks like. Yeah, in mine, I call it option one. Yeah. Oh. I know. Russell? Uh, I, I agree. Option one, I think is the best one. So okay. Procedurally, what do we need a motion to waive a second reading? Right, because generally you, you have to do uh, two readings for a policy, and this is a policy that was drafted by Labor Council. So that'd be the first thing you'd have to do is waive the second reading and dispense with that at a later date and then have a separate vote to adopt this one as written by Labor Council. So Joe Didi will make the motion to waive the second reading. Best five will second. The roll call vote, please. Doug Mogan, I. Joe DDI. I. Russ Fox, I. And then um, if someone want to make a motion to adopt option one? Joe Didi will make the motion to adopt option one. Russ Fox will second. Doug Mogan, I. Joe Didi, I. Russ Fox, I. Okay, so now, so now the next step that Kim and I will have to do is we'll have to contact the bargaining units because there's also an obligation on how this relates to um, those issues. So sure. um, Kim knows all the people to reach out to. <laughs> and I, I just think it's also a bit of common sense here too, right? I mean, that yeah. needs to be communicated up and down. You know, we don't want to encourage, obviously we don't want to encourage anyone to come in when they're potentially sick or exposed or, or to break the rules that have been put in place, right? So, you know, use their heads. Yeah. Easier said than 
what did you say, Joe? You just had a breakout of it with you guys? or I had a, I had a great kid three weeks ago to go to the Cape to visit a friend for a week. Came back, everything was fine. Uh, then the, the friend of the friend down there came down with it. The girl, the other friend got tested. She came down with it. My friend, my employee got tested. She came down with it. And it just went through the whole business because then they were afraid to go in. If you happen to talk, it, 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 you know, it's all good, but everybody got well. tested. Oh yeah. I've never been tested so much in my life. Mm. And you're good. Yeah. You yeah. look good, Joe. Imagine what you're going to look like when you shave that beard in the spring. Oh, I don't think I'm shaving. I'm done. I got a nice bridge down the floor with my I think name. You're going to need a hedge trimmer by then. Yeah. <laughs> but it's crazy. Like it's just just you know, you you should go get that antibody test. Uh, I, I, I got ten dollars that said back in, yep. I think it was January. You were sicker than a dog, remember? And you yeah, were coughing for three weeks after that. Yeah, I'm no. I'm almost going to wager that you already <laughs> been seen this movie. Yeah, I'll tell you Wednesday. I'm getting tested Wednesday for that. Because I, I agree. Because And I'm getting all these other tests done. They're always negative, and I'm laughing. Not laughing, but I'm like, okay, I'm around it enough. But yet I'm still negative? Okay. So that's all well, good. Well, like I said, obviously, yeah. everyone hopes that everyone continues to stay well, right? And But if – if and I hate to say if you're fortunate enough to already have had it, and you're, you know, yeah. obviously showing some level of immunity to it if you haven't gotten it again – all yeah. right, that's good. But I tell you, it could really, it literally could shut a business and ruin a business rather quickly. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. that's what's been happening all over the place. Kim, are there any other actions we need to take with regard to this matter? No. Nope. Okay. Thank you. We have several meetings with you this week on Thursday and Friday as we go forward with those other initiatives. I will see you then. And for Mr. Uh, Brett Banish, who's on the line listening to us, he knows because he's going to be at some of those meetings too. All right. Thank you all. And he's looking Thank forward you. to it. Thanks, Council. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Um, State A&F update on CARES Act Relief Fund Extension 2, the end of this year. Yes. Uh, originally, we were, uh, you know, running against the deadline of uh, December 30th. And after the um, law was passed and signed by the president, um, last week. The extension allows us to go out to December 31st, 2021. So that takes a little bit of the pressure off at this point in time. It's going to allow us to work out where we are with that FEMA application we're waiting to get back from to determine what they're going to approve for funding and what they're not going to. And then we then take the balance of those submitted expenses um, and we, we go back to the uh, state administration and finance agency to see what they will fund out of those. And um, those are things that Robin has been doing, um, you know, every other week she's been monitoring that uh, process, just like we've done other, other FEMA applications in the past for snowstorms and, um, you know, ice storms and things of that nature. This is just a much longer period of time. So that's going to be good. Um, the school is still continuing to prepare their filing for that allocation you gave them. And then the remainder of that allocation that we got, that's going to allow us to keep our um, recording our costs going forward for additional um, submissions for reimbursement. Uh, as Just as a reminder, we've already received two reimbursement um, awards under this. Uh, Robin submitted both of them was for 24,000. And I think the other one was 60, it was uh, 45. So we've gotten like 69, 70,000. That sound about right, Robin? Yes, it does. For two applications. So, mm -hmm. so that's coming along well, and now we're gonna see where the FEMA part is. So look at, th this is all about managing this um, COVID accounts that the Mass DOR authorized us to set up and actually encouraged every town to set up so that you run a deficit and then as you bring money in um, to offset it from these um, periodic submissions and reimbursements, then you reduce that deficit. And then at some point in time in the future, 
just like the ice storm and just like we got money through FEMA, we'll have to figure out um, what will be our net balance that we will have to liquidate through town appropriations. But we're a good six to nine months away from thinking about that right now. But we're, and we're also not running a huge deficit amount in that account right now either, correct? No, our, our total, our total, I think was probably around 270, 280 because we've already received, as I said, almost $70,000 of reimbursement, which have lowered that. So it's, so it, somewhere, it's, it's somewhere in the low twos right now, Doug. Which, I mean, it's all reimbursable on paper as it is right now, but we haven't, just to be clear for everyone that wants to know, I mean, there's not, we haven't made any outside, ex made any outsize expenditures that if suddenly FEMA decides to change their mind or the rules change or whatever that, you know, all of a sudden we've got to, you know, take some drastic action with the budget. There's nothing in here that's life altering in that what regard. The, what the state anticipates is that FEMA which they've been doing to other municipalities will disallow um, a good portion of that other 210,000 that we've submitted. And then what would happen is we, we see how much they give us and then the balance of what they don't give us, which was eligible under the state cares act. We then submit that to the state and then they reimburse us for that difference. Correct. Just so we're clear. Yep. which we were until you started talking that way. No, I'm just kidding. We got it. <laughs> I was good up until he explained it to me. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, new business. Fiscal year 22 budget packets and budget schedule. Yep. At this yes. point, uh, Carl, I think we should be moving forward to a May election, May town meeting time frame correct kind of even yeah, though we, we, we're going to be in the middle of vaccinations right we probably should plan like we're going to have our elections and meeting in may right that that is correct i'm envisioning that um uh mr Deedy, as your designee on the capital expenditures committee will work with uh robin and myself on the capital expenditures uh budget hearings and then separate from that, uh, Mr. Chairman, that you would confer with the chairperson of the finance committee and we would do the usual um, earlier budget hearings. It would be one in February and one in early March and then your reconciliation rounds in early April and then you'd produce a budget for the warrant and you'd go to town meeting in May as you normally do. And you haven't heard anything from the state that they're going to that they're going to push that out again. Not at anything all. like that. Nope. I haven't heard anything, Me neither. anything like last year. I, it, it, but I, I can also envision the May town meeting, uh, you know, being held outdoors again. Yeah. I guarantee that. Guarantee. I guarantee that's going to happen. Already lined up the porta potties. <laughs> as long as we have that covered, we can, nothing we can't do. If we have porta potties. Right. We're set. <laughs> We create, we create plenty of food. We just need a place to put it. So yep. we're fine. Well, I, I'm, I'm certain that Superintendent Willard will indulge us by letting us place the porta potties in her side parking lot again. So a uh, great location. We, so what I would like to do, what I would like to do, Mr. Chairman, is uh, uh, Rob and I will send you the budget schedules we usually do for the earlier uh, times with uh, the appropriate uh, Saturdays. And you can settle on those dates with the chairperson of the finance committee and who you want for the invited boards and committees. Fantastic. Which means we should also be reaching out shortly to the police and fire department and DPW, because those are the heavy hitters that we usually try to get in a little earlier to get a <clears throat> peek of what they're thinking, right? Yep. Yeah, and, and actually one of the biggest parts of that, when you think about it, is um, next Monday the 11th at 5.30, you're going to be having that discussion on the regional public safety dispatch, because that is a huge part of what they would be coming forward with for a, um, CapEx expenditures if we don't go down that other option. Correct. 
Okay. Chairman, I'd like to suggest that budget hearings probably would be better if we started in late February and then uh, finalized in March because maybe more people will be inoculated by then and we'll have a better sense of where everything's going, hopefully. That's a good idea. Usually, Russ, we do one in late February and then one in March. You're right. But we do have to, uh, usually we have to make sure we work around the national holiday, as you call it. Correct, correct. That was another reason why I'm asking it to be in late February. Was when is there the a national holiday today? <laughs> March 17th. March 17th is the national holiday. No, I think Joe's and referring February, to And February 14th is a national holiday. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was one today, too. Is that your birthday, Joe? Oh, no. 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 <laughs> is that so? I, I work on my birthday. I don't get a national holiday like some people. And Mr. Moglin, you work too. I'm not saying you don't. Just someone in this room apparently does it. And it's not me or you, Muggsy. You know, we're not that Irish, I guess. But anyways. Thank you. You're welcome. And happy birthday. Thank you. I mean, tradition, you know, <laughs> is the bedrock. Okay, of, Fence Viewer. The founding fathers of our <laughs> That <family>. you are. <laughs> are. Are there any numbers for, I mean, I know today is a birthday day, but is there a certain number anybody wants to throw out? I think he's over 50 by one, I thought, but I could be wrong. No, Ooh. by three. You look good for your age, kid. Three? You've <sighs> aged well for having a teenage daughter. You know, <laughs> it was funny. Until about, yeah, I, maybe that's about right. About five or six years ago, I looked like I was 35. Now I look my age. Yep. Uh, still teenage daughters kid. have that ability, don't they? They do. Uh, God, yep. they amen. Do. But anyway, <laughs> thank you. Other new business. Let's see. No, that's all I have. Mr. Fox? No, sir. Mr. Didi? No. Oh, oh actually, actually, one more thing, Doug. Actually, I do have something. Too late. Well, it's the, um, just to... Just to make sure that I had given you, Doug, uh, Rob yep. prepared a, yep. um, the new meeting schedule for all of January and all through the end of February for Monday meetings, except for with as a legal holiday. Yeah, um, anybody have any problems with that? Where are we going to go? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure you're good with it. So, Doug, you, you have that in front of you. So, obviously. Uh, we'll, and I uh, see that. Um, and you're uh, good with it? Yeah. Do we need to make any accommodation for January 18th, 19th? Do you think we're going to be okay skipping that week? I think we're fine. Okay. Because then you've got, and then February 15th, no meeting as well. Right. President's Day. So. Yes, yeah, vacation week too for the town, for the kids. So we're so good. Are they going to be off or are they, we don't know. Who knows? Yeah, I think they're off, right? I mean, even if they're Zooming, they're off. I mean, it's, it is. I do is. too. You're right. And so that's going to be a, a work commitment for Joe, so. Gotcha. Ah. You got okay. it. So, um, and so, thank you, yeah. Robin. I saw that you sent out the next meeting invitation. So you've got, you did it perfectly and your ball now. Yeah. Um, SPD Lieutenant recruitment process. So that was pending the chief contract. Chief contract is done. Moving that up on the agenda to current business. Um, Carl and I did review um, a couple. There was a typographical error, I believe, in the existing job description. Correct, Carl, that we need to correct? That, that is right, right. The, in terms of what was uh, required versus preferred. So we do need to make some of those adjustments. And then um, we can get to the point where we can start to... Uh, uh, post that position. Obviously, our time is being also monopolized by the uh, different uh, union contracts that we're in the middle of negotiating. Correct. So obviously, the sooner we put those to bed, we can keep the other process moving along. But that that job description piece is typographical in nature. We're just going to keep 
plugging away with it or what, how do you want to, how do we handle that? Um, and if the board gives you the latitude, you and I can just uh, make those adjustments with um, labor council and then we can start to look at uh, in the near future, what a posting would be. Joe, do you will make the motion to give Mr. Mogan the latitude he needs? <laughs> Bus Fox will second. Doug Moglin, aye. Joe Didi, aye. Bus Fox, aye. Thanks. And then we'll carry this forward then for next week as an action item to, to get this posted. Because that was one of the things we did want to yep. move in succession to get these things going along as we committed. Everything has to be cleaned up while Mr. Moglin is chairman. That is the deal we made with Mr. Moglin to make him chairman. So he's only got a few months left here, one way or the other, to get everything in order. That is true. The vice chairman has made that very clear to me. Very clear. That's great. That I am not going to have any time should I be elected chairman to do any of this crap. So Who knows what's going to be Mr. Moglin? Who knows okay. what's going to be left for the clerk to do? <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm already the having the shirt made, people. I'm, I'm already the having the shirt made. Just the clerk. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even know the clerk was here. I'm sorry, Mr. Fox. How you been? So January, so quiet. January 11th, we have a meeting about what, Carl? Regional dispatch? Yes, it's, it's in follow-up to that meeting that the Chiefs and I uh, all attended over at, um, in Chicopee. And as you know, they're, they're also looking at uh, building at another location now and expanding what they have. They've got a great setup right now, but they really do need to expand it to be able to accommodate for other communities to join into it. Right. When is that meeting, though? It's next January 11th, which is next Monday at 530. Oh, it's at this time at our Board of Selectmen it's, meeting. It, they're going it, to come. It's, ah. a, it's a <laughs> okay, I was just making sure. Gotcha. It's a 5.30 work session on your agenda next Monday, sir. So it's a work session next week. Well, well, and then after that, we go into the meeting. I gotcha. Okay. I got. <laughs> so it'll be a full voting meeting after it with everything that you think you might need to address. Perfect. And, and again, Mr. Mr. Chairman, this, this reference is some of the issues that the chiefs have been talking about in their capital planning budgets where there's going to be some large dollar um, requests coming up for issues relating to um, dispatch and radio equipment. So this is a big part of, um, you know, trying to uh, address for that in a cost conscious manner by uh, looking at a regional alternative. It's not, this is actually our third uh, venture into this. It started with the group of communities across the river and that one didn't uh, materialize and some of those communities went over to the Chicopee one and then uh, after that we had looked at uh, something with uh, Westfield. Correct. Okay well we'll get a look at it next week. Plus, we're going to sell that old dive truck. That's going to pay for their radios anyway. Oh, I can't believe they already put that outside. I, I thought know. It's been a heated garage for 40 30 years. years. 30, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Yeah, I'm very disappointed to see it outside. I, I actually complained to the police chief. I said, what the hell do you need the room inside for already? You know, slow down. Let it. We got to get it to bid and get it out of here, but. Well, yeah, we, we, when, when there's other vehicles coming over, so we're going to put a bunch of vehicles over there and and there'll be a surplus sale in the next several weeks. Uh, you know, unless you want to recommission that vehicle and maybe assign it to the safety officer. <laughs> no. I just no. thought maybe Russ Fox would use it for memorial parades because he was the one that bought it when he was a young buck. Uh, they already took all the stuff off of it. That's and then it got a foot of for the Humvee. And then it got a foot of snow on it the day after they threw it outside. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, yeah, it's all good. All right. Any other old business today before we close it down? No, just to wish somebody on the board a happy birthday. <laughs> I will second that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. That was a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor, Doug Moglin, aye. No DDI. Press box on. <laughs>